guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Benanin, and for today's video, we're gonna be reviewing a couple sunscreens from the brand Isden. Isden is one of those brands that I feel like you guys are constantly putting in my comments section. I've been trying to work down my list of like the most highly recommended ones and then kind of working my way down. So Isden is definitely probably like number two on the list of recommendations that I get from you guys. So I wanted to go ahead and pick them up. Uh, the ones that we're gonna be talking about today is the Isden Photo Arifatona Actinica, which is their untinted version. And then we'll also be talking about the Isden Photo Arifatona Ageless, and this one is tinted. So I think we will start out with the tinted one. As far as my skin type, as always, I wanna remind you guys, I have oily, acne-prone, sensitive skin. Right now, my skin is leaning more towards the oily slash combination because it is towards the end of the summer where we have warmer days and I'm very oily and then we have dry days where I'm like normal. That's kind of where my skin is sitting right now. And as far as my lifestyle <laughs> right now for when I tested these sunscreens, I'm spending a lot of time indoors if I'm outside, it's like to walk to class or maybe to sit outside and do work. So keep that in mind, I'm not in the sun, I am not swimming or sweating, so that's my skin. Okay, so let's start out talking about the Isden Photo Arifatona Ageless. This is their Ultra Light Emulsion Broad Spectrum SPF 50. It says on the bottle that it's designed for photo aging defense. This is a 100% mineral sunscreen with the active ingredient zinc oxide 10.7%. It is water resistant for 40 minutes, but like I said, I did not test that out because I was not outside swimming or sweating at all. So I can't really speak to the water resistance, but if you're looking for a water resistant sunscreen, this may be an option for you. I wanna note that this is not fragrance free. It kind of have a has a very like chemically, almost alcohol type scent to it that I didn't really enjoy, but it wasn't like too irritating for me. But I will say that this sunscreen, it starts out smelling like something and then it kind of dissipates the longer you wear it. But keep that in mind that if you are extremely sensitive to like fragrance, this does have a bit of a fragrance in it. I picked this up from the Isden website. I believe they also have it on Amazon. It retails for $66 and you get 3.4 fluid ounces. Um, in my personal opinion, that is kind of expensive, but you do get quite a bit of it in here. I mean, it's up to you. So as far as application, it says on the bottle to shake before use. This is a very um, liquidy formula, so you want to make sure you're giving it a really good shake before you use it. And then let me show you guys the texture. I'll show you the texture. As you can see, it's very runny, so it can get a little bit messy. I would suggest working this one in layers or in smaller amounts just because it's so runny um, and as you can see on it it is a tinted sunscreen it's kind of got this like tan beige ish tint to it and yeah the smell is kind of strong <laughs> it's kind of strong not gonna lie so yeah that's the texture of it and then just as you can see when you work it in it's just very liquidy it's very lightweight when i will say that when i wore it it really didn't feel like i had anything on um, so yeah, that's the texture to it. On the first day, I wore it with normal skincare. So this is basically my um, acne serum and then my regular moisturizer. And then I used the follow the two finger method and applied it to my face. As you guys can see when I apply it to half of my face, when you first put it on, it does have a slight white cast, but I found that when you wait the 15 minutes, the white cast disappears. I wouldn't say this is fully like no white cast invisible. To me, looking back at the footage and when I look at myself in person, it does have a slight white cast to it, but it's not extreme. So I feel like I can get away with wearing it on an everyday basis. And throughout the day, it just felt very lightweight. It didn't feel like anything heavy. I wore it for two hours and then when I came back, after the two hours, as you guys could see, I do look a little bit shiny. I mean, I said I have very oily skin, so that's not like anything bizarre for me to see that I have 
that I look greasy or shiny or something, but the actual sunscreen on my face didn't feel greasy at all. I, I was just oily. The only downside I'd say to the sunscreen is how it applied with the reapplication. So I wore it for two hours and then I came back and kind of blotted my face like I usually do and then I reapplied two fingers. And I felt like with the reapplication, the sunscreen just didn't sit in as well as it did with the first application. I feel like you could definitely see more of a white cast doing it this way and it wasn't blending in as seamlessly and as smoothly as it was before. I didn't experience any pilling, I will say that, so that's good. Um, and it didn't like clump up or anything. I just felt like it didn't ever fully work into my skin once it already had a layer on. Not the most ideal sunscreen for reapplication. This one, I did end up trying it out with no moisturizer. I don't know if I have a clip of that, if I recorded it. I didn't think it was as good of an experience as when I did have my regular sunscreen and skincare under. So this is not a moisturizing sunscreen. I feel like you really do need to wear a moisturizer under, even if you have oily skin. So for me, on the day that I decided to try it on without moisturizer, it just felt like I needed something. The sunscreen itself was not drying, but my face felt dry. So I would not use this as a replacement for your moisturizer. I would definitely moisturize underneath and then wear the sunscreen. Uh, as far as how it wears with makeup, I really, really like how this sunscreen wears with makeup. And I think it wore so well with makeup and other products because it's so lightweight. So right now I'm actually wearing this makeup and I just feel like my makeup just looks it looks flawless to me. It's been a while since I found a sunscreen that I can put makeup on and it doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't make my makeup like break up. It doesn't feel greasy. It just feels like like I don't have sunscreen on, you know? So that is really nice. I think this is a really good option for someone if you want to put makeup on top of it. Okay, so my overall thoughts on this one, I would say that I would recommend it for someone who has oily skin. If you have dry skin, I don't think this would be ideal for you. You could probably get away with it if you moisturize really well underneath, but this is by no means a moisturizing sunscreen. It, it's it's not. Um, as far as the white cast, I like I said, I saw a slight white cast, but it was not extreme. So I feel like I can get away with wearing it without makeup. If you have a deeper complexion than me, I would probably stray away from it. But for me, it was okay. As far as sensitivities, I didn't have any breakouts with this. I feel like my skin actually does a lot better with like mineral sunscreens and just zinc in general, I think really helps my acne. So I didn't experience any flare ups or irritations or extra breakouts or anything. But the only thing is if you're sensitive to fragrance, probably not. The next one that I tried from them was the Isden Photo Erifotona Actinica. This is a broad spectrum SPF 50 plus. It says it's designed for actinic damage and it's 100% mineral sunscreen. The active ingredient in here is zinc oxide 11% and this one again is water resistant for up to 40 minutes. This is their untinted version. So the first one that I tried, the Ageless is tinted and the Actinica is untinted. This one again has a fragrance. I think they smell pretty similar. It's just that like chemically alcoholy smell to it, which I don't really like, but like the other one, the smell dissipates the longer you wear it again. This one retailed for $55 and you get 3.4 fluid ounces again. So it's the same fluid ounce. Oh, so you get the same amount for both of them, but the ageless tinted one is $66 and the Actinica untinted is $55. Interesting. Let me show you the formula for this one. Again, it's kind of that liquidy formula like the other one. As you can see, this one comes out very white um, and it's very, I would say it's very lightweight, very kind of runny, not greasy at all. Um, and also not a very moisturizing sunscreen as well. I feel like the formulas are pretty similar, just one is with the tint and one is without. I personally didn't see a difference in how it felt or how it rubbed in. I think I only tried this one for like two or three days and that is because for me, I felt like it had a white cast that wasn't like, that just wasn't working for me. <laughs> you know, the other one had a slight white cast, but this one it was like, yeah, it's definitely there, which is weird because after watching a couple other people's videos, I found that a lot of other people enjoy 
the untinted one better than the tinted as far as how the white cast showed up but for me i feel like the untinted had more of the white cast but i don't know it was i don't know why i experienced that but i did so again for this one i followed the two finger method applied it I think in two layers and then rubbed it in um, and as you can see this one did leave a white cast even after waiting 15 minutes and again this one didn't cause any breakouts or anything uh, I didn't experience any sensitivities to it besides the smell making my nose run a little bit but besides that I didn't experience any extra breakouts or sensitivities but again I wore this one for two hours and then came back and blotted and reapplied. And I would say that after two hours, this one was even worse than that one. Both of them, I think the white cast looked better with first application than they did with the second application. So not super ideal for if you're someone that actually reapplies their sunscreen. So my overall thoughts on this, I would not recommend this for someone with a deeper complexion. I think the white cast was just a little too much for me and I can see it being even worse if you have a darker skin tone so as far as how the Actinica wore with makeup I think it was okay I feel like I had to apply more product to cover up the white cast it kind of wore similar to the other one where I didn't experience any like breaking up of my makeup or like it didn't make me look extra greasy it was very lightweight underneath as well but I just feel like I had to put more makeup on to cover up the white cast so I didn't like that. <laughs> as far as for people with oily skin, I think I would recommend it for people with oily skin. Like if you get past the white cast and you just look at how it wore on my skin, I think it would wear really well with people with oily to normal skin. Again, if you have dry skin, probably not ideal, but just moisturize underneath and you could probably make it work. And then as far as people with um, sensitivities or acne prone skin, I guess I would recommend this because it didn't cause me any um, extra breakouts or, or irritation so those are my overall thoughts if I had to pick between the two of them I think I would definitely pick the ageless sunscreen because of the tint and because the white cast just sat a little better um, but as far as how they wear I think they are both pretty similar so yeah that's my review on the Isden photo sunscreens let me know in the comment section if you have tried the sunscreen out also make sure you comment down below if you have any sunscreen recommendations for me we are now moving into the fall and it's going to be getting cooler so if you have recommendations for sunscreens that you prefer for the winter let me know i would love to review those all right that is all for today's video if you liked it don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you guys all in the next one bye